So we've talked a little bit at this point about some, some of the fundamental things that kind of constrain or, or are involved in understanding fuel cells, some of the thermodynamic issues like understanding the Nernst equation. We've talked a little bit about Faraday's law, how to connect fuel consumption to the current that we're passing. We've also talked a little bit about stacks. If we have many cells in series, how does that work in terms of the relationship between uh, stack voltage and cell voltage um, and how to kind of reconcile that with Faraday's law. Um, we've also talked a little bit about the idea of a polarization curve that voltage, cell voltage and current density are functions of each other that impacts the cell area that we might need. So, uh, so the rest of this or the rest of the course is sort of drilling down now into uh, some of the design aspects of fuel cells. If you look at most textbooks in this area, they will tend to build from the bottom up. So we start with a fuel cell, fuel cell concepts and fuel cell materials, and then how those go, go into a whole cell, how those things go into a stack, how that goes into a whole system, almost as if the system is an afterthought, like the engineering of the whole process is kind of like, oh, well, okay, yeah, you add some heat exchangers and there you go. But the truth is, it doesn't really work that way. Uh, it's sort of, I want to say, it's almost the opposite direction, um, where if you think about the main constraints that we have on a fuel cell, like what things are going to dictate its operability and how we're going to arrange other pieces of equipment around that fuel cell, it's actually really important and really critically important to how that fuel cell system will actually work. And it puts so many constraints on the rest of the design, like how you design the stack, and in turn, what cell characteristics you have to have to meet those criteria that you've set in, the, in terms of the stack design, all of that is sort of beholden to the whole system and how the whole system has to work together. So for the next uh, week or so, I wanna talk about process design and integration uh, in fuel cell systems. And that basically means for the moment, we're gonna think about the, the fuel cell as a black box. Fuel goes in, air goes in, exhaust comes out, heat comes out, electrical work comes out. We can think of it as putting a control volume around it and we're forgetting about what's inside it. It's a burner, it's a combustor that produces electricity. And then, you know, what other things do we have to put around it to make that actually work? Two main issues, which I'd like to focus on are, are is um, uh, thermal integration. So one of the things we talked about last time is that because of the thermoneutral potential and the fact that we're operating at voltages below that thermoneutral potential in general, um, we're always producing heat. Any fuel cell is gonna produce heat. We have to get rid of it somehow. We have to do something with it. Uh, and that's especially an important issue in solid oxide fuel cells, but to some degree, it's also an issue in PEM fuel cells too. Um, although the way we handle it is quite different. Another thing, a major issue, especially in, po in, in polymer fuel cells, is what's called water management. And this is mostly because we're operating polymer fuel cells below 100 degrees C, which means that if we're producing H2O as a product, ultimately that H2O ends up as water. And depending on where it turns into water and how much water there is, that can become a problem. Um, the other is that the properties of the polymer depend really strongly on humidity conditions. So we have to be careful to be controlling all the gas conditions to make it favorable for the PEM to operate and not to degrade over time and, and all these things. If you look at a process flow diagram for a polymer electrolyte fuel cell system, a lot of it is associated with this issue of water management. So those two things, thermal integration, water management, and those are all things we think about at the process level. 